In the heart of the Appalachian Mountains lies the forgotten town of Black Hollow, once a thriving mining community. Now it's nothing but crumbling buildings and ghost stories. Five friends drawn by the allure of the unknown decided to explore the old mines that had been sealed for decades. There was Jack, the fearless leader, Emily, the history buff, Chris, the skeptic, Laura, the sensitive one, and Mike, the jokester. They arrived at Black Hollow on a foggy evening, the air thick with moisture and the scent of earth and decay. The town seemed to breathe with an eerie silence, broken only by the occasional rustling of leaves and the distant hoot of an owl. The mine entrance loomed before them, a gaping maw in the side of the mountain, framed by ancient rotting wood and rusty iron gates. Jack pushed open the creaky gate, and they ventured inside. The temperature dropped immediately, and the light from their flashlights barely penetrated the thick darkness. The walls were damp and covered in strange markings, remnants of a forgotten language. Emily, fascinated, began taking pictures and muttering about the town's history, which dated back to the late 1800s. As they ventured deeper, the air grew colder, and the silence more oppressive. Chris scoffed at every creak and groan, dismissing them as the natural sounds of an old mine. But Laura felt uneasy, her intuition screaming that something was terribly wrong. Mike tried to lighten the mood with jokes, but his laughter echoed hollowly in cavernous space, amplifying the growing sense of dread. They reached a junction where the tunnel split into three. Jack, ever the adventurer, suggested they split up to cover more ground. Despite their reservations, they agreed, each taking a different path. Emily and Jack went left, Chris took the middle, and Laura and Mike headed right. Emily and Jack's path was narrow and winding, the walls closing in on them. They stumbled upon an old mining cart, rusted and covered in cobwebs. As Emily examined it, she heard a faint whisper. At first, she thought it was Jack playing a prank, but his confused expression told her otherwise. The whispers grew louder, echoing through the tunnel, filling her with a sense of impending doom. Chris, meanwhile, found himself in a wide chamber, his flashlight revealing old tools and scattered bones. As he inspected the remains, he felt a cold breath on his neck. He turned around, but no one was there. His skepticism began to waver, replaced by a growing fear that he was not alone. Laura and Mike's tunnel was the most treacherous, with loose rocks and unstable ground. They moved slowly, their footsteps echoing ominously. Laura's anxiety increased with every step, and Mike's attempts at humor fell flat. Suddenly, they heard a low rumble, and the tunnel began to collapse. They ran back, barely escaping the falling rocks. They regrouped at the junction, their faces pale and eyes wide with fear. Jack insisted they press on, convinced they were close to uncovering something incredible. Reluctantly, they followed him deeper into the mine. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, and the temperature dropped further. Their breath came out in visible puffs, and their flashlights flickered ominously. They reached a massive chamber, filled with old mining equipment and strange glowing crystals. In the center stood an ancient altar covered in symbols similar to those on the walls. Emily, entranced, approached the altar, but Jack grabbed her arm, warning her to stay back. Suddenly, the ground shook, and ghostly figures emerged from the walls. They were the spirits of the miners, their eyes hollow, and their faces twisted in agony. They spoke in unison, their voices a cacophony of pain and anger, recounting the horrors they endured in life. They revealed that the mine had been a place of dark rituals, where the townsfolk sacrificed miners to appease ancient gods. The friends were paralyzed with fear as the spirits advanced, their cold spectral hands reaching out. Jack tried to lead them back to the entrance, but the tunnel collapsed, trapping them inside. The spirits closed in, their whispers deafening, and the friends felt an unbearable cold seep into their bones. In a desperate attempt to escape, Emily remembered the symbols she had studied and began chanting a banishing spell. The spirits recoiled, but the ground shook violently, and the chamber began to crumble. Rocks fell from the ceiling, and the friends scattered, trying to avoid being crushed. Jack pushed Emily out of the way of a falling boulder, but was caught in the collapse. Laura and Mike were separated from the group, and Chris, in his panic, ran down a side tunnel, never to be seen again. Emily continued chanting, her voice growing weaker as the spirits fought back. In a final desperate act, Emily completed the spell, and the spirits dissipated with a wail. The mine continued to collapse, and she and Laura managed to find a narrow passage that led to the surface. They emerged, dirty and bruised, into the pale light of dawn. 
The town of Black Hollow was silent once more, its dark secrets buried. Emily and Laura, haunted by the memories, left and never spoke of that night again. But the whispers from the depths still lingered in their minds, a reminder of the horrors they had faced and the friends they had lost. Years later, rumors spread of strange lights and eerie sounds coming from the old mine. Those brave enough to venture near claimed they could hear the whispers of the ghost miners, still seeking vengeance for the horrors inflicted upon them. Black Hollow remained abandoned, a ghost town with dark past that refused to stay buried. And so, the legend of Black Hollow lived on, a cautionary tale for those who dared to uncover the secrets of the past. The spirits of the miners trapped between worlds continued to haunt the depths, their whispers a chilling reminder of the darkness that lies beneath the surface that lies beneath the surface.